at this uh, start of the uh, presentation sessions. I would like to spend about 10 minutes to introduce you the workshop and its program with a couple of slides. To start with a personal introduction, my name is George Hetini, and I was told this is how you should write it in Nepali to yeah. spell it correctly. I cannot read that. If it's too complicated, feel free to simply call me George, which is something like this in Nepali. I'm a geophysicist, a kind of geologist who goes to the field and makes different kind of measurements about the Earth, and then makes different interpretations about how the Earth as a machine works and functions. I was born in Hungary, research area are the Himalayas, and today we are here in Pokhara at the very center of Nepal. In my home country, the largest mountain is about 1,000 meters high. You can drive to the top with a car. In the country where I work, Switzerland, the highest mountain is about 4,600 meters. You have to be trained to climb to the summit. In both countries, the largest earthquake was about magnitude 6.5. As a geophysicist, I am much attracted to the Himalayas, both because the mountains are higher, up to 9 kilometers, and also because the earthquakes are larger, about magnitude 8. Since I first came to Nepal in the year 2061 BS, my interest to learn about the mountains and the earthquakes is very high. I also realize how important it is to share the most useful information that scientists find with the society through the schools and with the teachers. I am not alone with this motivation. As Siva has already introduced you the teaching team, so all five of us are here to share with you the latest and most accurate knowledge about the Himalayas and earthquakes and to answer all your questions you may have. And we all have a common motivation to do that over the next two days and also later if you have questions. As I mentioned, the Himalayas are a very good place to study the Earth. There are high mountains and here we can understand how they form. There are several types of rocks, fossils and minerals which tell us many interesting information about the geological history. And there are particular events such as floods, landslides and earthquakes which tell us more about how the big earth functions. Our intention during this workshop and your future task in the classroom is to tell a story about what scientists think of the earth. This sounds very simple, but in different regions you may meet people who have their own way of thinking about earthquakes. For example, in Japan, the mythology says there is a giant catfish, Namazu, here, who causes earthquakes, and he is called the Earth Shaker. He lives in the mud under the islands of Japan and is guarded by the god Kashima, here, who restrains the catfish with a big stone. And when Kashiba doesn't pay attention, Namazu can move around and cause violent earthquakes. I recently learned that in Nepal there is also a similar mythological belief. In parts of Nepal, some people think that the earth is carried by the fish, and when the fish moves or changes the shoulder that carries the earth, there is an earthquake. I heard that in other parts of Nepal, the same mythology exists, but with an elephant who sleeps below the ground, and when he turns, it is causing an earthquake. I was told this is a traditional belief, and no painting of the fish and the elephant in this context exists. But if you know of these pictures, I'm very interested to see them and learn about them. People may also have more religious views on earthquakes. For example, that an earthquake is a punishment from God. If you look at the major religions on earth, which are depicted here at different symbols, 
There are several big groups and all of them have subdivisions and branches. Christianity has several branches. Buddhism has several branches. Hinduism is very complex and has a very rich history and has several branches. These religions are described to be different, but they also share some similarities. For example, most of them have ten commandments, which are very similar to each other. So wherever you are, you meet people who may already have some thoughts about the Motherverse. And all the researchers also have their views about the Earth Earth and to explain how the Earth works. They walk around, they look at rocks, with the naked eye, with a microscope.